Hey, hey, look at this. Day two of trying to get this done on a daily basis. So let's see, let's see how we go. Hey, this is Edward with More Geek Than Gay. Cue music. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. I know the music's a little bit long for uh, what's going to be most likely a shorter podcast, but I'm sorry, I really like my theme music, so I'm going to use it. Ah. So anyway, I was thinking that we were going to be doing a different show today, but Joseph got called into Joshua Tree because they're expecting a delivery, so... I have to change what I'm doing. I originally thought we were going to be talking about America's Got Talent and the new Doctor, the latest Doctor Who episode, because the latest Doctor Who episode has everybody a buzz. But nope, no buzzing, no buzzing, no buzzing, no buzzing, no buzzing, no buzzing. So, uh, oh, before I go further into what I am going to talk about, which I have notes, I got notes. Before I get into that, I do want to thank everybody for for yesterday coming back and everything. Sorry about the the false start. I didn't realize until later that one of the segments did not get in there and one of the other segments ended up in there twice or ended up in the wrong spot or whatever. So, I had to go and fix that. And so Unfortunately, that did mean that a comment that had been left was erased. I believe actually two comments were erased. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Terry and Charlie, for welcoming us back. And we're, we're getting this done. And hopefully no more comments will be erased because no more corrections will need to be made. Sorry, sorry about that. So, and yeah, that... And trust me, I'm not going to raise comments just because they're, like, whatever. These weren't even whatever. These were really nice comments, and I feel bad about having to erase them. It's just, like I said, the, the, the episodes weren't good. There was a mistake in the episode, and I had to fix it. And speaking of fixing things, when I was listening, I do want to make a quick correction or clarification. I made a comment about how the roommate that dare not speak his name had extra money. Well, yeah, he has extra money... Because he decided not to go on his vacation instead. Okay, he was going to go on a vacation to Las Vegas to meet up with some friends. And he decided not to do that. And that's how come he had the extra money. Because he decided to help out with paying the second half of the rent instead that I got robbed of. So, heh. But we're doing better now. So, hey, yay. Hmm. Anyway, on to what I'm going to talk about. I am going to talk a little bit about America's Got Talent, but I'm not going to talk about it in any sort of spoilerific way because Joseph has yet to watch it. I don't want to ruin anything for him. Uh, we got to the top final six, and I really liked one of the one of the groups was clearly my favorite. I mean, just clearly my favorite. Although I was sitting there going, mm, I wonder if they'd be a good Vegas act. 
Uh, I don't know if this act is good for Vegas, but I did think that they were the best act. So, I mean, right now I'm saying they, so you already know it's going to be one of the groups. But anybody who is ever on America's Got Talent, if I'm your... If I find you to be my favorite act, realize you're not going to win. You're going to come in third or fourth. That has happened every year except for last year when it was Ken Kenichi or whatever his name was. And I didn't end up getting the chance to see the final episode, the results show. So maybe that's why. Maybe you just want me not to see the results show and have to find out months later who won. But, so, unfortunately... As is the rule, the group that I liked the best, the act that I liked the best, came in third or fourth. Uh, there's the five acts, there's or six acts, uh, Quintavius, that's the 12-year-old kid. Then there's the magician who, I don't know how he made it this far because he's doing stuff that you would see at a birthday party. Um, just made it bigger. So, I mean, most of those things, I'm like, I can see what you're doing. I, I I can't see it, see it, but I know what you're doing right there. That's not really that special of a trick. I've seen this done before by much, much better. I love people who can do the basics and make it look good. That's not what he did. Um, there's a, I believe, South American magician, sleight of hand magician. He had only one arm. Uh, some sort of accident happened, he lost an arm. He did close-up magic. Very traditional, looked, but it was beautiful to watch. Even though they were the same tricks that you've normally seen before, he did them so beautifully and so smoothly that it was art. So really, I appreciate if you know how to do the basics well. You know how to ba do the basics good enough to be doing them. He didn't do them to where they were in art, and he didn't do them. He didn't do anything I hadn't seen before. I don't know how he got that far. Then there was Emily West. Really liked her. Sons of Serendip. Might as well just say it. They were my favorites. Joseph can't be too surprised if they're my favorites that they didn't win. So no, no surprise there. Then there was Acro Army. They were the acrobatic kids. And then um, some some other kid from Colorado, I can't remember his name. Something Dakota or Dakota something. Dakota Fanning? Nah, I don't think so. Anyway, uh, I do have a couple notes that I wrote down during the final episode. Uh, Acro Army. There's one of the male performers who seems to be one of the main... There's the guy who choreographs the whole thing. I guess he had been on America's Got Talent prior... And he's now their choreographer. And then there's this other kid who seems to be like their main gymnast. He does a lot of speaking for them. He's right there in front a lot. And I have suspected for quite a while that he's a little queen. And a dear, sweet little queen he is. And he's going to make someone a fine, fine little wife someday. And he pretty much cemented it when um, they were talking about something that Mel B had to wear. And in the background, he, he commented and it was picked up on the microphone, you work it. So it's like, aw, aren't you adorable little queen? Aw. Everything. Hey, it's queens that help make the world go round. If I had gone and seen a queen, my hair wouldn't look like this right now. I'd have a real haircut. So, also though, that same queen, if they ever do a Teen Titan, a classic Teen Titans movie, look at this, I'm looping it back around to comic books because that's what I do. But if they ever do a classic Teen Titans movie, they need to seriously think about casting him to play Aqualad because he looks just like Garth from the 60s. Garth is the name of the, uh, it, the, the Aqualad's real name, Garth. Garth. I don't think Garth has a, has a second name. If he does, I don't know. He was always Garth. But he looks just like him. Okay? I always wondered how Garth got that curly hair, because you never saw that anywhere. But then again, he was also a foundling, so who knows? But 
Hollywood. If you ever do, and if you do, if there that Teen Titans TV show that you're thinking about doing, Titans. If you ever do a flashback to like the origins of the Teen Titans, and you show Aqualad, hire this kid. He's got the physique. He's got the face. He looks just like him. Okay, so that that's me getting this kid a job if the if it ever comes up, and I'm not even going to ask for a slice of it. Yeah, I'm that kind of an agent. I'm not going to ask for anything. Yeah. So, also, Cindy Lauper was on it. They didn't have her on anywhere near long enough. And they... Um, the main thing I noticed was big butt. Cindy's got a big old butt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Cindy's got a big old butt. And then... I was reminded that this season, there were two hand balancers acts that made it quite far. And the main difference between them, it was kind of like um, Fred Astaire versus um, Gene Kelly. One was very athletic, one was very artistic and smooth. The one that was athletic made it just a touch farther, but he kind of went astray a little bit, and that's what caused him the cost him going into the finals, I think. So, but I was reminded of them. I actually liked the athletic one a little better. Uh, I thought he had a nice little charisma about him. But the and he also ha he's the one with, who had the little, cute little chihuahua. But the other one was really good too. It was just weird that there were two hand balancers in this season who made it quite a bit and. They both, you could compare them so clearly as, um, like like I said, Fred Astaire versus Gene Kelly. So, those are my thoughts. I, I'm not going to talk about who won. I'm not going to talk about anything along those lines. I really want to talk about who won. Um, I'm waiting for Joseph, though. Because I know Joseph will have things to say about that. So, and he'll have an opinion, and we'll see whether or not he's happy or not with who won. Just like we're going to see what he, his thoughts are on Doctor Who once he gets a chance to see it. That said, like I said, had to rearrange things. I actually thought I would take care of this tomorrow or the next day, but because Joseph's not here to talk about this stuff or Doctor Who gonna go on to remember how i said yesterday patrick of scream queens if you're not listening to it go listen to it patrick of scream queens gave us all homework and one was to watch the movie odd thomas which i had watched and i told you about yesterday and the other one was to see a movie called one um 100 bloody acres which um, I got a chance to do that too. He wanted a review on that. He so I'm going to call him up and give him my my two cents worth on that. But 100 Bloody Acres, I found it to be able to view again on a sketchy website at work. It's amazing. The good websites. No, no, I can't watch it on YouTube. But I found a sketchy one. Yeah, a sketchy one that. Like, constantly wanted me... If I paused it for any reason, I got to where I just wasn't pausing the movie. If I paused that movie for any reason, it's like going, Hey, you want to download this program? Hey, we got Foxy Ladies! And something, something, something. I'm really glad we actually have, like, really good virus programs up at work. And that, you know, it gave me the option. And it's like, no, no, no. And I just stopped pausing, and then I got rid of that pro or got out of that website. But, 100 Little Acres, I don't have the Wikipedia or IMDb def uh, um, summary of it. But basically, it's about these two brothers who um, have an organic fertilizer plant. Okay? And some kids come across it, and things end up being getting quite out of hand quite rapidly. It reminded me of, like, if you took Motel Hell and Wolf Creek and filtered it through a can of Fosters. Because it's Australian. It does have a quirky little sense of humor. 
but it's it's yeah, it's kind of Motel Hell meets Wolf Creek ish. For a long time, there's only one dead body, and that body was presumed dead at the very beginning. So it's not like anyone killed anyone. It just they found a dead body, and the movie goes from things to things spinning out of control from there. The two killers, oddly enough, are kind of likable. Okay, especially the one the the one brother Reggie. Uh, he, Reggie's really likable. His brother Lindsay. Lindsay's not unlikable. It's like he recognizes the dirty job that needs to be done and he's it's not like he's wallowing in it or it's not even like he suggested it. It's just a case of like he realizes what needs to be done and also he's been taking care of his brother all this time. So he's not even unlikable. Loved their little motto. Um, we'll fertilize you. Reminds me of certain porn movies out there. Uh, and there's a moment when the two brothers are arguing and the the older brother, the one that, uh, Lindsay, the one that I said is more no-nonsense been taking care of, um, anger issues, and he um, he's kind of strangling his brother in, in a neck lock or an arm lock, but also kissing him on the forehead while chastising him. It was really weird. It was really weird and somehow felt right. Um, the, the couple cute little lines. Uh, We're not so psychos, right? Just small business operators. Yes. Which could be the motto of many, many, many small business operators. We're not psychos. We're just small business operators. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, the older brother for some reason reminded me of... Um, oh, and I thought I wrote down the name here, but I do not see it anywhere. But he kind of reminded me a little bit of... Oh, there he is. Terrence Mann, who played Rum Tum Tigger. Or Tiger. I don't know why. But there were moments when I just kind of expected to see him bust out with, like, some cats. I don't know. That, that's probably just me. There's a, a quirky little twist at the end. Bodies start piling up. It becomes really funny in its weird ways. Relationships are a bitch and sometimes take precedence over whether or not you're going to survive um, a an organic fertilizer f farm. Which, I'll be... I mean, it's they reveal at the very beginning that they've been using roadkill. They, they go up down the road to find roadkill to grind into the fertilizer. And, you know, if they happen to find a dead body of a person in a car accident, apparently they've been doing that too. So, feel free to develop the rest of the movie from that premise. Okay, from now there's three kids who are who are on their way to a concert who end up at this fertile, organic fertilizer farm where they're about ready to dispose of a body they found. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Yeah, relationship problems are a bitch. Oh, a, another great line. He wants my potassium, which is just so odd and funny, especially in the movie. It's funny. And uh, let's see. Oh, apparently in Australia, you can get some really good stuff because one of the kids that's on his way to the concert, he takes some acid and then he, he smokes a joint and he's tripping. He's the one who's, like, escaping and trying to, like, get them some help. And he's tripping. Tripping! Oh, my God. So, <laughs> okay. Um, another great quote from the movie. As things are going out, going all haywire, and people are starting to realize that they need to like, just focus on what what needs to be done and, you know, not worry about, like, what has happened. To convey that, the line is, 
um, it's not about what we did do or what what we didn't do, but what we do do. Yes. It's about what we do do. Um, oh, yeah, there's a scene in there where one of the bodies is about ready to be ground up into fertilizer stuff, and i am he's awake. I don't know why he's not just pulling his hands up, because his hands are the first thing that are going to... And once you're dragged into this thing, you're not coming out. So I'm like, going, well, at least make him... Make it harder to pull your hands up, and so he has to lower you a little bit. Buy yourself a little bit of time before you get dropped in there. And... I thought that it was weird that it had a dedication to Jack, Pat, Reg, and Joyce. There's a really twisted little moment at the end. I recommend this movie. This is a quirky, good little horror movie. Definitely worth watching. If you get a chance, check it out. It is on YouTube. I just couldn't catch it there. It is on DVD. Um, I believe it's a 2013 movie. It might have been 2014. It might have been 2012. But it's really recent. And it's from Australia, so everyone talks like that. And it's enjoyable. It's really enjoyable. Okay? So go forth. Get yourself a little bit of, of Australian horror movie fun. Enjoy yourself the idea of people being turned into fertilizer and that's that's that okay i want to thank you all again look forward to your comments please if you get a chance check out patrick scream queens also if you get a chance leave a comment because we love comments and don't forget to check out Joshua Tree Feeding Program. They are a program that helps people with HIV and AIDS get food. That's where Joseph's at right now, helping them out, because they're, they're having a food delivery that he wasn't expecting to have to help with. Their website is www.jtfp.org. They have a sister program that helps... People feed their pets so they don't have to choose between feeding themselves and feeding their pets. All volunteer organization, so any assistance you can offer, they'll be more than they'll be they'll be giddy. Giddy, I tell you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Bonjour. And um wow, bon noche in case it's happening at night. Niha niha ma and um buenos dias and hello <laughs> good day or whatever you whatever else i'm i'm missing because i know i'm missing stuff and then bonjour and catch us tomorrow i'm thinking it will be us because joseph should be back and we should be able to talk about doctor who and the stuff that i'm not talking about with america's got talent so catch us tomorrow thank you thank you thank you bye